Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Hankook Tyre, Driving Emotion, and Car Loop, data to empower Australia's EV revolution. Hey everyone, I'm Tom, this is Joy. Hello. And we are at a house in Northern Sydney to check out the SIG Energy DC module to try it out with the Xpeng G6. So let's go give it a test. Okie dokie, so like I said, we are in a viewer's house in Northern Sydney. That's the Xpeng G6 that we have on loan. And the next to it is the viewer's uh, SIG Energy battery stack. As you can see there, there are five modules, very similar to uh, our uh, battery at home with inverter on top. So I might get Joy to point these out for us so that you know what we're talking about. So inverter on top, five modules of which the bottom four are batteries. One. So one, two, three, four battery uh, modules. They're eight kilowatt hours each. So a maximum of four times eight, 32 kilowatt hours. And then the fifth one is different to ours. That is the DC charging module. So that can top out at 25 kilowatts. You can see here that is a RFID authorization box, um, which uh, comes with the DC charger. Um, I've been told there are two of these that come with the installation and you can set it so that you can just tap that to get it going. So that's useful for if you want someone else to use your DC charger, or maybe you can rent it out and make some money on the side as well. Um, but you don't have to have it if you don't want to, but that's quite a nice handy feature to have. So let's have a look at the uh, DC charging cradle there. You can see a nice SIG Energy logo there. And by default, it comes with a 7.5 meter cable, uh, but our viewer has um, said that he went for the 10 meter option. He's able to drag that cable to his garage to charge his cars inside. And the other thing to note is that you do need to do that during your ordering stage because it's connected to the module so you can't change your mind later. Yeah, so yeah, keep that in mind and make sure you've got the right cable for your needs. When they come to install it. Yeah, yep. so you're always going to just uh, unhook that for us. So lift up and pull out, so it's pretty easy. We might just take a couple of loops out as well. Yeah, one, two. two, let's see if that's enough. And literally, we'll just plug it into the X-Pone. AC, DC. Yep. And that's it. That's it. You don't need to do anything else on the app. We might get our viewer to show us his app as well while it's charging up. So here we go. It's going to just get going in real time there. You can see how it says XPEN on the primary car. That's great. So it already knows what vehicle is charging. You see the time that's passed and then you'll see eventually how much power it's drawing and introducing into the car. You can hear that clicking there next to the battery. You can see the state of charge of the car, 55%, which will correlate with uh, our car as well, we'll show you in a second. There you go, 22 kilowatts, which is great, which is pretty much the speed minus losses from the charger. And you can see how much energy is being added. And if we just go back to the main screen here, you can see each module, how much output as well for each battery module. So. There you go, so each one is discharging at four kilowatts. And then that inverter, by the way, is a 10 kilowatt inverter, just for your and info. Is it already charging? Let's have a look at the decibel meter. Because it's, yeah. Yeah, that's very quiet, isn't it? I can't hear, I can't even really hear the fan whirring. Yeah, I can, I can hear it with my ear next to it. Yeah, that's super quiet. We are outdoors, mm. but that's good to know. I might just go back to the app here. Let's have a look at the main screen. So there we go. So it is charging at 23. And it's a bit of a cloudy day. You can see up in the sky there, a few clouds around. So drawing some from solar and drawing 18 from the battery. And importing some from the grid as well, just to top up. Because he's only got four battery modules, so the most you'll get is four times four. 16 kilowatts from the battery and then Plus the rest anything else from the solar from solar and then anything else from the grid to make up for it so that's working perfectly there so hopefully as the clouds move over we we'll get more from solar and then the rest from the battery so that's working pretty well actually it's exactly as intended it's good we might check the car as well to see what it's showing Okay, so we're inside the vehicle there you can see the charge rate is also 22.9 kilowatt DC 
Voltage 500 volts, it's an 800 volt car. So making use of that 800 volt architecture, 40 amps, and then the same thing is going on as well in the instrument cluster screen. So 22.9 kilowatts, which is correlating with what we saw on our viewer's app. Okay, so we might unplug soon, but I just wanted to reiterate the fact that it's a 10 kilowatt inverter. It's a single phase installation. And I'm just still so impressed how quiet it is. I know we're outdoors, but barely hear the fan whirring even though it's charging at 22 kilowatts, 23 kilowatts, so that's very impressive. All right, we might stop the charge session now. So from the app, you can do it from the car as well, but let's do it from the app. We're gonna press stop. Stop charging immediately, let's do that. Instantaneous almost, very fast, very responsive, and you can hear the clicks from the car as well. And Joyce is gonna yep. pull it out. It's so easy. Yeah. How good is that, a DC charger? at home. I'm jealous. I want one. <laughs> gonna have to save, save for Christmas. And then Joyce is going to wind it up. There, there we go. We go yep. So sitting flush now with the cradle there. That's such a neat and tidy installation actually. It's, it's lovely. Very good. It's the small things, but the colour of this matches with this. <laughs> it makes <laughs> That's me important. happy. It is, yeah. It really is. You might as well do it Sometimes the white doesn't match and then it's, it's just frustrating when you have to look at it. Yeah. No, that's great. Very happy with that. Hello everyone. So as you just saw then, uh, there was a bit of an issue with the audio. We did record like a final thoughts on the way back from our lovely viewer who allowed us to uh, film at his place. But so here we are uh, doing one a few days later. Uh, so yeah, so again, thanks to our viewer to allow us to film at his place, which was great to see the, the DC charger module in action. Mm. Uh, look, the cost is one thing, I guess. Um, I just saw on Facebook, actually, that um, SIG Energy has reduced permanently the cost of the DC module by 40% in Australia. So That's huge, isn't it's it? It's huge, That's... yeah. Big discount. So we'll try to get some quotes, I guess, moving forward. Um, so why, I guess, why would you get the DC module compared to, say, the AC module, which SIG Energy also has, or even just like a generic third-party um, AC charger, right? So I guess what it boils down to for me is the fact that the DC charger does bi-directional charging. So, so um, just in language that I understand, yeah. <laughs> it's that, so you, it's, the benefits are that I, A, you can get the charging car quickly, mm -hmm. which an AC can't do, but really the main benefit is that you can bring the energy from the car instead that's stored in your car mm -hmm. back to the grid. And so bi-directional. Home, home, home and grid. Thing, which which you, you can't do at all with an AC charger. No. You, you need a DC charger to be able to do that. Yep. So that's my understanding of yeah. it. Yeah. I guess, yeah, charging quickly is one thing. So 25 kilowatts. I guess arguably you can get a car like, say, the Zika 7X or even the Polestar 4 that can charge at 22 kilowatts. So 22 kilowatts versus 25, not so big a difference. But yes, the huge difference is that you can export the energy from the car back to the home or to the grid. So V2H, V2G, which you cannot do with AC charger. Mm. The question is, is it worth the extra cost, right? That's the thing, because I mean, if, you, if, if this is going to be a home charger, do you really need to be able to charge that quickly? Because chances are, you're going to be spending more than two hours at home, I hope. You hope. You know? Um, Unless you've got a cheap tariff during the day, then yes, it might be yeah, worth Yeah, but then again, um, a, cheap, a cheap tariff is going to be saving you cents, <laughs> right? Like like maybe a dollar or two dollars a day. Yes. So why would you pay thousands of dollars to save one or two dollars a day? That's what you've got to, you know, you've got to do the math. <sighs> that is it? the question. Right, that's the question. So we've got to look at the economics of it eventually. Mm. Sit down and work it all out. You know, what is it? What eventually will be the cost-benefit ratio? Right? Is it two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, four thousand mm. dollars? What's what's like the sweet spot of buying this yeah. charger over an AC charger? But if you're a small business, maybe, or if you if it's if you can like rent out the charger, then maybe that might be worth it from kind of like a business perspective. I'm yep. thinking, you know, like because you would charge people, yeah, charge people to charge their car. Mm, literally. So, yeah. Yep. So yeah, we'll keep doing the um, the research and um, yeah, if you know, look at the pricing and the quotes and so on, and then we'll uh, try to get one of our own soon, if the if the price is right, literally. Otherwise, uh, yeah. Any final thoughts for the DC charger? Mm, yeah, I think it's cool, but I think yeah, I think at this stage for what we need, I think it's a little bit too expensive still, isn't it? Because yeah. for us, it's like well. You're paying thousands to save a couple Pennies. of dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's cool boasting rights though to have, isn't it? I can charge DC at home well, and export yeah. back. Yeah. We'll see. All right, well, well uh, yeah. sorry. Let us know if you can think of like how mm. you would use this because 
Yeah. I mean, for us, I can't think of a use for us personally, but yeah, if you've got either a business or if you can think of a, a model out there that would kind of work, mm. let us know why well, this would work in your situation. Well, another reason to have us have it in our place is to test all the press cards that we get. I think that's a benefit as well. That if they, oh, as in for us to test whether they B2G. can go V2G. Yes. Okay, yes, yes. That's, I think it's, that yeah. might possibly be worth it, but again, it just depends on the, the price of it. So we'll work yeah. it out, work yeah. it out um, off camera and, and come back to you guys yeah. uh, once we find yeah, the, the sweet spot. In the same way, we, we um, take every press car off to the, a Tesla supercharger <laughs> to see whether or not yeah. it can charge in a Tesla supercharger. So yeah, yeah. it's just to, to make sure it can do B2G. have an extra mm. line in the spreadsheet. B2G tick. <laughs> Column. Or question yep. mark. Yep. 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 All right. Well, otherwise, uh, I'm Tom. This is Joy. Uh, until the next video on Ludicrous Feed, it's happy charging. <laughs>